All right, targets nine and 10 homework. So starting with target nine, there's three things that we need to be able to find on target nine. That's the equation, the domain, and the range. So Adam just got a new job at McDonald's where they pay $8.25 per hour. Since Adam is in school full time and plays football, he's a busy guy, he can only work a maximum of 10 hours per week. Write an equation that represents this situation. So we're gonna first write the equation and then we're gonna write the domain and range. So the equation. The situation here is that Adam has a job at McDonald's where they pay 825 per hour. So we have y equals 825 x. And I always like to define what x and y mean. So x is the number of hours, because it's 825 per hour. And y would be how much money Adam is making. So when we write domain, remember domain goes with x. We've got to think about what would be the fewest number of X, the fewest number of hours that Adam could work. Now, it technically doesn't say that he has to work every single week. It also doesn't say that the minimum would be one hour. The minimum could be 15 minutes. The minimum could be a half hour. And again, I know that that doesn't seem logical, but what if he shows up for a shift and he gets sick or something like that and he has to go home? So the minimum I'm going to write as zero, but I'm not going to put, um, or I'm going to say um, equal to. So, because it doesn't say that he does have to work every week, does it? No, it doesn't say that he has to work every week. So we're going to have the minimum be zero. The maximum is going to be 10, because it tells us the maximum number of hours is 10. So then the range goes with Y, the amount of money that Adam could make. So if you don't work any hours, which is the minimum number of hours, you don't make any money. So we're going to have a zero. And then the high end would come from if you worked all 10 hours. So if you have 825 times 10, you would have $82.50. On the second one, so same three steps. We're going to write the equation, the domain, and the range. We just have a different situation. At 7 a.m. on the way to school, Dorian's car got a flat tire next to Green Trails Mobile. He asked them to fix it at their shop while he was at school. The cost of a new tire is $80, and the shop charges $15 per hour it takes them to work on the car. The car could be ready anywhere from noon to 3 p.m. Write an equation that represents the situation, then write the domain and range. So we're going to start with the equation. So we have a couple different components to the equation in this case, because the new tire is $80, no matter what. And then um, the shop charges $15 per hour. And so the tire cost isn't going to change. Um, no matter how long they work on it. But the amount of cost per hour will change uh, depending on how many hours. So our equation would be y equals 15x plus 80. Then we're going to write our domain and range. So before we do that, let's define what this means. So 15 per hour is um, the amount the shop charges. So this is the number of hours. And Y, as usual, is going to be the money, so the amount it costs Dorian to um, fix his car. So the domain. The domain would be the number of hours, and we're going to deal with the fewest number of hours to start with. So remember that 7 a.m. is when this all starts. So 7 a.m. to noon would be the least amount of hours that it would take them to work on the car, because it says it could be ready from anywhere from noon to 3 p.m. So 7 a.m. to noon would be five hours. That's, I don't know why, why I wrote 15, I said five. Five would be the least amount of hours that they could work on it. The most amount of hours would be if it was from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And if you count that out, that's gonna be a total of 
eight hours. So it's anywhere from five to eight hours that that shop is, in, or that car is in the shop. Took a little bit of problem solving on this one. The range is going to be the cost. So the least amount of cost that it could be is if the sh um, car is only in the shop for five hours. So it's a, if it's 15 times 5 plus 80. 15 times 5 plus 80. That gives us 155. But the sh uh, car could be in the shop for up to 8 hours. So I would plug in an 8 instead of a 5. And I'm just putting this into my calculator. And that would be a maximum cost of $200. On the back, it's pretty similar, but we're going to use an inequality instead of an equation to start with, and we're going to solve that inequality. It said Romy and Michelle, which I don't know if you've seen Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion, it's a great movie, have decided to take a weekend road trip. Together they have saved uh, $325 to spend. They calculate that they'll need $150 for lodging and food for the weekend, and gas currently costs $275. How many gallons of gas can they purchase and stay within budget? We're going to write and solve that inequality and write the domain and range. So starting with the expression. So it's $150 for lodging and food no matter what. But the thing that could change is the amount of um, gallons of gas that they purchase. And it's currently $275 per gallon plus that 150 that they're going to spend no matter how far they drive, that's just budgeted in. And then overall, they have to spend less than or equal to 325. So this is our inequality based on the situation. And just like we did in our notes, we're going to have to go ahead and solve this inequality. So I'm going to subtract 150 over. So we have 275. Oops, 275. X is less than or equal to 175. Then I'm going to divide by 275 on both sides. And I get X is less than or equal to 63 point, and that's going to be 63 repeating. Okay, so just like we did on our notes, we're always going to round that down. So instead of saying, even though it's 63.6, we're always going to round down. So I'm going to say it has to be less than or equal to 63. And again, remember, when we talk about X, we're talking about the number of gallons of gas. So we're going to use this information to um, write our domain and range. Domain. So what would be the least amount of gallons of gas they could purchase? Technically, they could purchase zero. So maybe um, like prior to this, they filled up their tank um, and then they decided to go on this road trip and they don't need to purchase any gas. Maybe they're staying somewhere close. It's a little bit of a staycation. So zero is a possibility. We just solved for 63 being the maximum. Now we're going to write the range. So how much could they spend? So looking back at that expression, if they purchased zero gallons of gas, they still have that $150 that they're going to have to spend on lodging and food. But they could also go all out, spend um, the maximum amount of money by traveling or by purchasing 63 gallons of gas, and so I'm plugging this into my calculator, so 323.25. All right, and then our last problem, it says there's a carnival at Chesterfield Amphitheater and your mom begs you to take your little sister and hands you $20. It costs $5 to park at the amphitheater and each ride ticket costs 75 cents. Write and solve an inequality to represent the number of rides you can ride and still stay within budget. And as always, we're going to write the domain and range. So we have um, $5 that you're going to have to spend no matter what. 
but there's a variable here and that's the number of rides that you could ride. So the $5 and that has to be less than or equal to the $20 that your mom spends. You're not trying to spend your own money on your sister, I'm sure. So go ahead, we're going to start by solving this inequality. So going through these steps that we've gone through before. So if I do 15 divided by 0.75, we get 11.25. And as usual, we can't say we're going to write ride 0.25 of a ride. You would have to either purchase um, enough tickets for 11 or 12 rides. So to stay within budget, we're going to round that down. And again, defining x as the number of rides. So technically, if we're thinking about domain and that's x and the number of rides, it is possible to ride zero rides. Maybe you get there and your little sister gets really nervous and doesn't want to ride anything. She could ride zero rides. Then the maximum number of rides would be 11. We just solved for that. For the range, if your little sister doesn't want to ride any rides and you don't either, you still have that $5 uh, parking fee that you would have had to pay. Then you can pocket the $15. Don't do that. All right, so then if it's 11 rides, you have 0 0.75 times the 11 rides plus 5. So I'm going to plug this in, 0 0.05, oop, 0.75 times 11 plus 5, and that gives you 13.25. I feel like something's wrong here. 15, hang on one second. Oh, you know what? So I'm solving this again. And maybe you guys found my mistake. This is actually $20. I don't know what I plugged in earlier. Or sorry, 20 rides. So I'm going to fix that as we go through this. That's my mistake. Hopefully you caught that. So the maximum number of rides would be 20. And then if we plug that in, we have 0 0.75 times 20 plus Five. And you can plug that into your calculator if you want to check my work there. I just felt like that um, number was a little bit too small, so when I went back and checked my work, um, I found that it was. And so if I plug that in my calculator, now I get 20. So notice that this number didn't have a decimal when I went back and corrected it. That was my mistake. And so um, it was all just whole numbers all the way through. Uh, let your teacher know if you have any questions on that. Sorry for the mistake on that last one.